Is the phone booth bit overdone? Hello, I'm Tom Lank, actor, comedian, and Acorn TV super fan. Is that, is that not, what's like a cooler version of super fan? Like a... Obsessive? I'm an uh, obsessive watcher. Avid viewer? I watch a lot of TV. I'm here in a tiny alleyway in London. It's very whimsical. During the last couple years, I spent a lot of time watching all of my favorite shows on Acorn TV. The reason I loved them so much was because I felt like I was getting to travel. Now that things are kind of back to normal, I want to go into my TV in real life. I want to go to that green grass, lush place. I'm going to take you, Acorn TV viewer, on a, a little murder mystery tour of all of my favorite shows but like the actual places where they film the shows. I don't know why I want to go to a place where so many people are being murdered, but it's just so pretty I can't resist. Won't you join me? Well, I have rented a car and I'm going to try and get out of London. I, I have driven on the left side of the street before. I think it's going to be okay. I have high hopes. I'm a little scared. Would you mind stepping out the car? We'd like to talk to you about a break in a Greyfriars house last night. And what if I don't want to talk to you? First stop in the tour is Oxfordshire for Midsummer Murders. An hour and a half from London brought me to the small town of Tim. Behind me is the Six Bells pub. And I, I, I can't explain to you how whimsical it looks in person. To me, this looks like a Christmas ornament. You know what I'm saying? The thatched roof. It just checks off all of my whimsy boxes. And also the, just this little square that I'm in here. It's just so romantic. I want to get married here. I want to live in this cottage so bad. Please slide into my DMs if you live here because I would like to come stay with you for Christmas. Thank you. A little drive through the countryside brought me to Dorchester. I can't believe I'm standing where so much of the action in Midsummer Murders takes place. I actually get a bit of a spooky vibe here. I don't know if this will be the village I choose to live in, just because it does, it does seem a little murdery here. And I haven't really seen anyone on the street yet. Terrible business. Pretty sure it's haunted. Do all my drinking at the cricketers and badgers lift now. What in the crickets and badgers and gifts? Did he just say? Next up, Watlington. Watlington, it's where it's at. Watlington? I had to stop by this tiny library that had maybe like 25 books. And then I met up with new-ish Watlington resident Jenny to chat about the pluses and minuses of countryside of living. Uh, I do sometimes wish there was more to do. I used to live in London, so it's very different being out here, but it's, it is nice. I, I don't think I can go back to the noise now. I like the peace and quiet. Maybe it is dull and therefore people start to think about whether they're going to murder something. <laughs> That's why there's more murder in the countryside because people are so bored they need to create yeah. drama in their lives. Yeah. If you're my neighbor and I'm making too much noise or my my horse goes into, into your meadow, don't kill me. Yeah. Just give me a call and say, hey, don't do that. Okay, so apparently we are in front of Jeremy Irons Gate, a local celebrity. A local celeb who pops out, who does our Christmas raffle, and who pops out occasionally in his horse and trap, riding around the countryside, as you do. So translation, horse and trap, that would be a horse and carriage, people. Yeah, like, like a horse and carriage. Like a school. little horse, like a two-seater carriage? Yeah. It's almost, a, I say, get your horse, crickets, and badgers out of my meadow. Mm. A quick stop in Oxford. So many things film here, but I don't have time to see any of them because I'm trying to see all of Midsummer in one day. I know people don't do what I did. Plan accordingly. Onward to the beautiful town of Whitney, which is a perfect place to stop right in between Midsummer Murders and Agatha Raisin. You are a Whitney local. I am. What made you choose Whitney? Um, I think it's just, it's really pretty. It's got plenty to keep you, do, you know, busy. But like, what keeps you busy here? A pub. <laughs> there's three right in front of us. Four, actually, there's one there. Sam mentioned that there was a Downton Abbey filming location right there in town, Cog's Farm. Look at this! Of course I had to go. This really triggered my cottage core yearnings. Can you even handle this countryside? I'm sorry. Hold on, are you seeing this right now? This really happened. Is God trying to send me a message or something? Thomas, it's me. God? Is that you? Surprisingly, no, it's me, acclaimed actor and travel enthusiast, Joanna Lumley. Tom, I think you should move here. What? 
Mm -hmm. You should move to the UK and appear on all of your favorite Acorn TV shows. I should move here. And as it is said, it shall be done. At a little loss, which is fine when everywhere you go is beautiful. Turns out I landed at another Downton Abbey filming location. I think this was the pub that they used to go to. Why don't all homes have a lovely, what would you call this? A, a foliaged entryway? Sort of a hobbit hole entrance. Hello, weary traveler. Please come through my foliaged entryway and enjoy a pint of my finest ale. I gotta get one. You know what? Sometimes you just gotta stop and enjoy a sheep's meadow. Just around the bend, I stumbled upon the quaint village of Stow on the Wold. And prepare yourself. Look what I found. So magical. Look at this. Ugh. Well, this door obviously needs its own show, so I'm pitching Acorn TV the following medieval program. But, Mummy, Daddy, I don't want to marry a princess. Well, then who shall you marry? Yes, pray tell, my child. Him. 10 out of 10 on the whimsy scale. I don't know when I invented the whimsy scale, but thank Joanna Lumley that I did because Biddeston, a.k.a. Carsley, uh, Agatha Raisin's hometown, did not disappoint. It is beautiful. Um, did I say whimsical already? It's whimsical. The White Horse Pub. And finally, we have the Pièce de Résistance, Agatha Raisin's Cottage. Yes, the spot where she started all of her murder solving. Someone turn this cottage into a birthday cake for me, please. Perfect. Perfect indeed. Off to Bath where I finally got to see the Royal Crescent in person. And I've met up with my two friends, Ruth and Megan. What are your first impressions of the Crescent? It's hard to take in one eyeful. Yeah. You kind of have to look at it like you were taking a pano picture. That's right. It's, it's very wide. <laughs> look, you can't even get the whole thing in the picture. The Royal Crescent has been in a lot of TV shows and movies, mm -hmm. standing in for London. Do we know why they pretend this is London? More Don't parking. Worry. Off to the Roman bath of Bath. Okay, now somebody, one of you said that you, you're supposed to drink that water. Mm -hmm. It's Just so like sultry. they scoop it out of there? I don't think it, I think it comes from a separate bit, but you can, you can drink it. There's a bit, there'll be a bit. Like in the gift Close shop, they're going to yeah, be selling spa water. I uh, fancy spa water, babes. It's three quid. And it tastes like eggs? Yeah. It doesn't taste like eggs, but it's got that kind of sulfury. It's not, it, I mean, it's supposed to be good for you. We toweled off bath and headed towards... Port Isaac, home of Doc Martin. Okay, Doc Martin is technically not a murder mystery, but there are medical mysteries. Sometimes people die, and also I've been dying to go there, so deal with it. Any further questions? Port Isaac, aka Port Wen on the show, is a tiny fishing village located in England's sort of left ankle. It's a region called Cornwall. Do you really get that village oh. vibe? Oh. Mm. <gasps> is that a cave? See that? What? Yes, in their backyard. What? We strolled down to the village and could not help but notice all of the teeny tiny doors. Look at these doors. It looks perfectly the right size for me. Oh man, where's my ring? Adorable. See what I, I'm, I know, I'm really, I'm so sorry. Having a wee hike up the hill to Doc Martin's house. Come on, oh, come on, look at this. What are you doing here? We have made it all the way to Doc Martin's house and look, turns out you can actually rent this cottage. It's up for lease. Would you like to come inside? 10 out of 10 on the whimsy scale. A footpath nearby was calling our name, so yes, we had to explore. It's a thing here, right? You're allowed to sort of cross over people's land. Yes, you have yeah. right of way, even over like farmlands and stuff. But you've got to be careful of cows because cows can actually kill people. And I'm not even joking. What do you mean they can kill like, people? Very rare. No, but they can. They t cows can be very violent. <laughs> I'm hoping these aren't killer cows. They seem pretty chill. This spot right here, overlooking the bay and the village, I feel like classic troubled DCI who just solved a crime but can't seem to connect with their teenage daughter or, or who has a drinking problem. It's just so dramatic. Devastating. Hold on. 
It's a bell done. <laughs> What's her name? Going right past the cow. Those people seem less scared than us. Now, Ruth and Megan have been going on all day about how we had to have Cornish cream tea. Cream tea means a scone. A cup of tea, a scone with jam and clotted cream and hopefully butter as well. Scone. Yeah. Jam and then cream? Or cream and then jam? There's a big argument. I know, but the beauty of it is you can have it how you like it. Why the rules? You could. Is this a scone if it's soft? Scones should be soft. Well, then why would you ever have a hard scone? Scones are hard. In America, though, like hard and heavy. No, no, the scones are hard and they're triangular. No, that's a. That's not a scone. That's an oatcake. No. What? Yeah. I've never known a scone to be a triangle. You might be confused. So am I. Let me try and clear things up for you. This is a scone and that is a scone and they don't have these kind of scones. And this kind of scone doesn't taste like a scone. It tastes more like a biscuit. This is a biscuit which we call a cookie. So most hard cookies are biscuits. But chocolate chip cookies, the big soft warm ones, those are still called cookies. This is a pudding and that is a pudding, but over here we do have bread pudding. Breakfast pudding, which is definitely not pudding. And actually let's not discuss breakfast pudding. And also a side note, I recently learned all desserts can be called puddings. And most importantly, please remember, these are fries and these are chips and these are chips, which they call crisps. Skinny fries and big fat chips and these are chips, which they call crisps. And some crisps can taste like shrimp. Prawns. Can you see that rainbow in the sky? Yeah. Yes, I can. It's me. Yeah. What? One um, last item on my Doc Martin checklist, which was, yes, recreate the Doc Martin publicity photos. Ruth, in passing, mentioned that the remnants of King Arthur's castle were like 20 minutes away. You can't just drop King Arthur's castle and then think I'm not going to make us go there. Why am I obsessed <laughs> with small scale bridges over babbling brooks? Hey, Cornwall coastline, um, are you real? So behind me is King Arthur's castle. Well, what's left of it and the, the bridge to get there. I've never seen a waterfall that hits the beach before. What's King Arthur's Castle without Merlin's Cave? Which made me think Acorn TV Merlin biopic, take one and action. Let my people... No. You shall... No. Nope. I'm just not getting Merlin vibes. Well done, Harry. I feel like this is reading Father Christmas. That's it. This is Merlin. When you pull the sword from the stone, you shall be the next King of England! I think. Those cows were big, weren't they? I love the ones in Port Isaac. They just seemed unusually large. Cows can be very cows violent. Be very violent. Very violent. Very violent. The um, oh, my fishwife is so funny to me. Well, I think fishwife is a derogatory term for somebody who's like screaming a lot. <laughs> Because I think the fishwives used to scream. They used to sell the fish. Oh, like fresh fish. Yeah. They would walk oh. into the water they, uh, and carry the husbands on piggyback back to the shore. Why? Because they weren't to get their feet wet. Because they couldn't get sick. I don't know what the connection with getting your feet in sick. Ah. Good for you, Tom. Oh, you, this is how you die. No. It was a long drive back to London, so we decided to make one final stop in the New Forest to chat with our friend, Actor Guy Henry, who, as you can see, has guest starred on Midsummer Murders. And yes, I am symbolically wrapping it all up right where we started. Look, okay, I will say I feel like I'm in an episode of A British Murder Mystery because you invited us into your country home. You made us tea. Cause they tea, always, you, crumpets. You insist on tea. Lemon even, cake. Even when you're in, you know, interviewing a potential murderer. Oh, yes. As you know, you know, I would really rather be having wine myself, but uh, I have to wait till six o'clock. Why do we think that in these tiny little villages, like hundreds of people are being drowned and beaten and and mm. turning up dead? Do you think that anybody would, would, would read the local paper and say, uh, I'm not going to move to midsummer because I'll be dead? Why do people die? Mm. In nasty and strange ways. We're at the end of our murder mystery tour. My big question is, do you think I have what it takes? Could I get on one of these shows? Yes. How though? They're well, you, gonna... I've heard you do accents. I've seen no, I don't do I a great do accent. Accents, and I'm... You do wonderful accents. This is Freakway Aid. Freakway. 
Let's ball up our heels. Uh, we make quite a good double act. Mm. Uh, yeah. We, we, we'd be very oh. good detectives. Oh I'd, my be, gosh. I'd be very tall and English, and you'd be slightly smaller and American. <laughs> well, what would the name of the show be? It would be like Odd, odd Couple, yeah. but. Um, Something but Yank? Yin and Yank! <gasps> Oh. Honestly, that's a brilliant idea for a TV show. Balls in your court, Acorn TV. In the meantime, if you're looking to plan a trip for yourself, why not base it around your favorite shows, okay? And if you want someone to do all the work for you, they even have Acorn TV tours. And seriously, I can't wait to make a whole new trip out of a bunch of other shows. Thanks for watching and thanks for traveling. Breakfast, and see you next time. Breakfast, pudding, and a breakfast, pudding, and a breakfast.